Hey y'all, I got this super cool Edwardian themed corset pattern and I'm gonna open her up and play around. Thank you to Ye Old Stuff on Etsy. Um, I mentioned their account on my Instagram as well. So if you want to see some like behind the scenes things of me, you know, opening packages and sewing and like things I don't always post on this channel, make sure you follow my Instagram at Lexi Tate. Because it is used, there are pieces already cut out, which actually makes this a lot easier for me. Sorry, you can't see my face. So the fact that this pattern is already cut out is actually very helpful for me because I'm moving in like a week and a half and I should probably be spending my time packing and not sewing. So the more shortcuts I can take, the better. I'm gonna use artificial boning or zip ties or whatever I have around the house because we are on quarantine, meaning a lot of stores in the area are not open. I don't have any guilt cutting up this pattern from the 1980s. So let's go. I'm from Jersey, which means I don't know how to read instructions, so I'm just gonna wing it. Okay, I lied. I'm actually going to follow the instructions this time because the last time I did that, it didn't really work out well. So follow the instructions. The piece of fabric I have has this really cool design towards the bottom or top um, and I'm not sure if I want to put it towards the bottom or top of the pattern like whether I want it to be like a sweetheart or you know towards the bottom it's interesting hold on so yes currently I don't know if I want this to be at the top or the bottom because I have the rest of this kind of there so I'm going to post it on my Instagram story and see what people decide So according to the Instagram vote, you guys decided to have the striped go towards the bottom. So that's what I did. I laid out the pattern pieces and cut and pinned. Dude, you're losing it. Yeah, we were 14 days into quarantine at that point. Okay, so it's been a couple days, so I pinned it up. I do have to repin it, however, because the instructions want it to be a turned lap seam, which basically it allows for extra support. So yeah, I'm gonna go repin that, and then I will start working on the lining. Okay, so according to the instructions here, I basically have to lay the rough ends over top of each other, stitch down here, and then it will be folded over and stitched. Uh, this is hard to do one-handed. Hold on. Also, I sped it up because it was getting boring. Okay. Lay over top, stitch down here, folded over, stitched again, stitched again. And then on the back of this, where I will put the lining to help strengthen it, and then I will lay the boning over top of this to cover up the stitches. Okay, so because I'm moving, all of my furniture and stuff has been like put in storage. But my machine's still here, so I think I'm just gonna set up on the floor right here. So about a minute in, I realized that I forgot to take my machine in to get serviced. About a month or two ago, I meant to take it in to get serviced and cleaned and all that. And now that we're on quarantine, I can't actually do that. So that means I'm going to be hand stitching this entire project. I don't mind that though, because now it means my machine can go into storage and this project is more transportable. It's also an excuse to watch Netflix while sewing. Hello, I hope you like uh, today's outfit. It's called Funeral in the Club. Yesterday was my birthday, so I took like a brief, you know, intermission. Oh, my hair is still drying. Very exciting because I got this very beautiful book on patterning corsets and history of corsets. Um, this was a recommendation of a YouTuber I watched and I will put their channel down below. Um, very beautiful, I'm very excited to open that up. Also, the boning came. Um, I ordered about 10 yards of synthetic plastic boning by Simply Fabric on Etsy, so I'll put them in the link down below as well. To those wondering, yes, we're still on quarantine, which means I'm still hand-stitching everything right now. 
The best thing about corsets and crinolines is it is separated out into three different time periods. So that way you can easily find what you're looking for based on an era and then it breaks it down into specific pieces from this era. So very helpful. So fun fact, the author of Corsets and Crinoline also drafted the pattern that I'm using for this project. Hello. Okay, so like I said earlier, the boning came in. Um, so I'm going to cut some of that up and start laying it down over here. Also, the busks came in, so I'll open those shortly. Okay, so I have all of that cut out. Um, the busks came from Bias Facebook on Etsy today, so I'm going to stick those in and yeah, stitch it together. I put the busks in here. They're all pinned up and ready to go. I'm going to mark where each opening and clasp is and um, cut some holes up and then I'll start stitching them in. I also have some more slips of fabric to go down the lines of each seam here to help give some more support. Then I will flip it around and start making sleeves for the boning. I don't know where I left this video off at. Yeah, so um, I have everything basically pinned up ready to go and I'm going to start stitching that. And since it's quarantine, that means all of my classes are online and on the floor. Okay, so um, ignore my appearance because I've been moving stuff all day and also ignore the music in the background because family. Um, so this is a room that I might possibly be turning into either my bedroom or my studio. And this is a room that I might be turning into either my bedroom or my studio. So my goal for tonight, since this is the first night in the new house, is to decide if, to decide if I wanna do my studio in this bedroom or in the other bedroom spoiler alert i chose the first bedroom because that one looks out to the water and who doesn't want to sew while looking out to this view hey all. so that's my view now um there is a road right here so if i ever like stop it's probably because there's noise but look at this beautiful yeah i'm gonna continue pinning in the boning channels and i have this one pretty much good to go this one's all done i just need to do this one then look at those geese it's definitely taking a little bit longer than i thought but i'd rather have them nice and secured also when i line this i am going to go down the same seam with the lining so they'll get an extra little stitch but yep i have a little bit saved over so it can fold over the top and be hemmed on both sides and yeah these will be all good to go also i just want to let you know i have so many pins on this thing like on the back and on the front i am getting stabbed everywhere i'm wearing jeans which is great except for i have this one hole here which is happens to be where i'm putting my fabric so i'm getting stabbed every six seconds it's not fun Oh my god, I'm totally loving this. I love it. So one thing I did notice while putting in the boning is because the boning came wrapped up in a very tight spiral, it was already kind of warped. And so you can see it's like going up, you know, instead of just straight, which there's nothing wrong with that except for it almost makes it look inside out because this is the inside and it's warping up like this where technically it should be warping up from this side. I'm not too worried though because A, I can easily just turn them in their casings and B, once this is set up against a mannequin or a body, eventually over time they will warp to the shape that I need them so I should be good to go. Mannequin for a little while 
let it unfurl a bit. And once I put in the eyelids and actually tie it up against myself, I think it'll be fine. So, cross your fingers. So this is what I have so far. Everything is pinned and stitched up. Um, there's a few little spots that you have to clean up before I start looking for a lining. Um, I did turn the bonings in their casing and yeah, it turned out pretty well. I found this nice lace just kind of laying around. I'm going to stain that to match the same color and take out that little black ribbon in the middle. But yes, that is what I have so far. Ugh, I'm tired. There's a lot of curtains um, at this house that we just moved into. This pretty little lace. I can use this curtain for the lining. Stain it a little bit more because I feel like that's too white. Yeah, I'm gonna stain that. Oh, you have to film it. Enjoy these shots that my family took. That's like some A plus filmmaking right there. Oh my god, no, that tongue is not necessary. Are you guys ready for some ASMR? And we're done. Ooh, you can see all my dirty laundry, cool. But this is kind of what it looks like over a chemise from the side. And right now I just have it pinned together in the back so I can see how much space I need to add. Anyway. <laughs> Once I add to the back panel, then I will be able to fit in it, which is great. So I had clothes on. Bless you. I had clothes on until like two minutes ago, by the way. I decided to put pajamas on and then immediately after I put on my pajamas, I decided I should actually film the rest of this. I did that, by the way. That's like a five minute dress video. Um, so anyway, I have the two halves of the corset here pinned, ready to go. I dyed this fabric as well as some, some lace. Right now I'm going to pin everything together so I have a nice and flat lining and yeah, we'll be good to go. Okay, so this is what I have so far. Right now I have all this is stitched and the lining is stitched to the top. Um, I'm gonna make a few more adjustments to make this, you know, equal with its second half. I just pinned in this lace too, which I need to iron, um, but then it will be good, yeah. Also, I'm going to fold over this lining piece over the edge so that way it has some extra support and fold over this cream lining to add some more wiggle room for when I'm trying it on. Just kidding, I'm still here and I'm still sewing. Cool. I always do these as soon as I put pajamas on, but um, here are the two pieces. Um, this is all stitched on the back. I did an extra stitch along each bone just so I can have some extra security. So then I have to go and do that to this one now. Since it was nice out, I decided to sew outside, but then I realized the step I was sitting on was wet. And then you can see me seeing something very, very scary right about now. That's when I saw a wasp coming for my face. And yeah, so I was still outside, but I had moved location a little bit away from the wasp nest. Yeah. Look at this ensemble. Like, look at this. This is really making me want to wear pants with loops more often when I sew because look at all these pockets and a place to hold my little push pins until I decide to sit down and stab myself in the ovaries. But as of right now, it works out nicely. 
That would be great if I had a tripod. You know what I have? A tripod. Do you know what I don't have here though? A tripod. Do you know why? Because it's in quarantine and I didn't listen to my parents and they told me I should have moved all of my things. Okay, I was a little salty, but it was actually really funny trying to get my phone to hang up and I managed to get it stuck in the fence. Word of the wise, guys, listen to your parents or you won't have a tripod to film with. A lot has changed since I started making this. I started making this when I was on spring break and I went back to school for a couple of days. Then they sent all of us home back for quarantine because of COVID. Uh, during that time, we also moved house and now it's finals week. Obviously, me not having a tripod right now is the least of my concerns, and I'm just grateful that my family and I are able to be safe. We have been on quarantine for over 50 days at this point, and it is a little weird. I do feel a little restless not being able to have my art supplies with me. A lot of them are still in my dorm at college, and yeah, I feel a little restless, but I'm grateful to have this space. Look at that possessed chair. Also, look at my Mona Lisa socks. Okay, so I've laid it all out uh, face down. I'm going to basically fold over these little slits that I have kind of on the back. It will cover up this raw seam. Okie dokie, artichokey. It's time to try her on. This will also help me stop being stabbed by pins. My pin situation wasn't working, so I'm using brooches for the back. Look at how pretty these are. That is that. Um, it's definitely crooked. It's definitely a little lumpy right now because I don't actually have a tide in the back. It is just, everything is pinned back there and it's not pinned to my size. So it is just kind of falling straight. See when I take my hand away. But once, once I tug on that, like now it starts to fit to form. So what I'm going to do after I finish like stitching everything up is I'm going to actually have it sit tied up really tight against my mannequin to help kind of give it that curve and help form it. Also between wearing it and storing it on a mannequin that will help naturally form the boning to like how I need it. So it won't be as lumpy, hopefully in a few weeks. This was the ribbon I bleached earlier. I'm gonna take that out and dye it. And then I'm going to put this for the back. So pretty. Hold on, hold on. Let me pause, little women. Okay. I obviously have some things to tweak. Like, I'm gonna probably raise this up a bit and like hem this here. When I tried it on, these two boning channels on either side were a little bit too long for me, so I might try to trim them a little bit. See, this one here was also popping out, so I'm gonna fix that in there. I got these from Etsy. I will link the shop in the description down below. I'm probably going to distress them a little bit just so they match these hinges right here more. Um, because they have a really nice color to them. And I think if I just sand them down a little bit, it'll get this nice distressed look. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's funny because this was actually my hair color before I started playing around with dyeing my hair.
this pattern is cut out. Thanks for watching.